Welcome back, everyone. It's Dr. Lindner. We are now going to spend some time being able to understand the flow of blood through the heart. Now, again, let's pay attention to the colors that we see. We see blue and we see red. And here's the key on the left. We see red is oxygen rich blood and blue is oxygen poor blood. Now, you'll also see a bunch of numbers here on the left-hand side, and off here to the right-hand side, we will see the names of the chambers and the names of the important valves, and we'll be able to follow this path along with what we have here. So, number one is the right atrium. We're always going to start with the right atrium. Now, we have to find a way of bringing all the deoxygenated blood into the right atrium. So all the deoxygenated blood from the head and the neck and your facial muscles and your right arm and all the muscles from your fingers of the right extremity and the left extremity, they all have to find a way of making it into the right atrium. So they're going to come through the superior vena cava, which is number 10, into the right atrium. And number 10 here on the bottom, we also have, we'll call this 10A, and we'll call this 10B. So 10B is the inferior vena cava. So all of the deoxygenated blood that's coming from all of the abdominal organs and the lower extremity, your thighs, your legs, your toes, everything that's coming from the lower part of your body also has to find a way into the right atrium. And it's going to use this main blood vessel called the inferior vena cava. Okay, so far so good. Superior vena cava, inferior vena cava, both bringing deoxygenated blood into the right atrium. But there's another very, very important part that brings deoxygenated blood to the right atrium, and it's the heart itself. The heart is a muscular pump. Muscles require blood. Muscles require oxygen. The oxygen is delivered to the mitochondria to produce ATP, which is energy. So the heart itself has arteries and veins going to and from the myocardium, which is the heart muscle. So when all the blood is sent to the heart to help it pump, the blood is now deoxygenated and has to find a way to pump back to the right atrium. And it's going to use this opening right here. We'll call it 10C. How about that? We'll call it 10C. It's called the coronary sinus. The coronary sinus is this dumpage area of where all the veins of the heart will find a way to dump into this coronary sinus, this opening that leads to the right atrium. Okay, now blood is pooling into this right atrium, and the pressure is building and building and building and building. And when the pressure builds up, the body says, hey, we got to get the blood out of this chamber into this chamber. We got to get it out of the right atrium and dump it into the right ventricle. So we have some muscles in that right atrium that are called pectinate muscles. Pectinate muscles. And a lot of blood can empty from the right atrium into the right ventricle just through simple gravity when the, for, when the pressure builds. And then the pectinate muscles contract pushing out a lot of remaining blood into the left ventricle. And it has to go through this valve right here. The valve between the right atrium and right ventricle is called the tricuspid valve. That's called the tricuspid valve on the right side. Okay? TRI, if you rearrange the letters, R-I-T, right? Okay? A little silly way to remember it. So the tricuspid is between the right atrium and right ventricle. So this valve opens, blood is now, so the, the blood is going from superior 
to inferior, pumping blood from superior to inferior, so that now the blood makes it into the right ventricle. Okay, so now this blood here is emptying so that the blood fills up into the left ventricle. When the pressure in the left ventricle builds up, it says, hey, we got to get the blood out of here. So it's going to contract and force the blood upward. So the atriums contract superior to inferior, whereas the ventricles contract inferior to superior. Let's remember that. That's an important concept that we're going to talk about in another video. So the atriums contract superior to inferior. The ventricles, when the muscle contract, try and force and eject the blood upward from inferior to superior. And when it does that, when the blood pushes up, it forces this valve shut. What valve shuts? The tricuspid valve. Lub, lub dub, lub dub, lub dub, lub dub. So that makes the lub sound. You always hear the closure of valves, just like you'd hear a door slam shut. You don't hear the opening of the door. You hear the slam shut. That shuts, but the blood is still pushing upward in this direction. This valve here opens. It's the valve that's referred to as the pulmonary valve, because this is a push valve, right? So it's like a push door. This pushes open. And from the pulmonary trunk, it forces blood into the pulmonary arteries, pumping blood away from the heart into the lungs. So now when blood is in the lungs, we're picking up oxygen. From the lungs, we have to find a way to get to the left atrium. So that's where number five comes into play, which is the pulmonary veins. You have pulmonary veins on the left side of the heart, pulmonary veins on the right side of the heart. Now, let's compare the myocardium, this musculature, on the left side of the heart here, and let's compare it to this on the right side of the heart. Which is thicker? Well, definitely the myocardium on the left side of the heart looks thicker than the right. Well, where did the right atrium have to pump blood? Well, not really far. It only had to pump blood right here to the lungs, so it doesn't have to work too hard. So the muscular chair here in that right ventricle doesn't have to be too thick. But now that the blood is in the lungs, we're finding a way to pump the oxygenated blood into number six, which is the left atrium. And now the left atrium is filling up with blood, and the pressure is building and building and building, and it wants to get the blood ejected out of there, so it's going to force it down into number seven, which is the left ventricle, going through the valve right here. This valve opens, and that valve between the left atrium and left ventricle is called the bicuspid valve. So now we have the blood that's in the right atrium, the right, uh, uh, sorry, the left atrium, and when the left atrium contracts, it too is going to push the blood from superior to inferior. So it's going to push the blood from the left atrium into the left ventricle. So what's going to happen is the blood is going to leave here and it is going to fill up here. And as the pressure in the left ventricle builds up, remember in the left atrium, when it needed to eject the blood out of there, it, the right atrium, the, sorry, the left atrium contracts superior to inferior, but when the ventricles contract, they too are going to contract inferior to superior. So when it pushes the blood up, it forces this closed. What valve is that? That's the bicuspid valve. And it, blood pushes up in this direction 
here on the other side of this pulmonary trunk, and it has to go through this valve leading into the aorta, and that's called the aortic valve. So as the blood goes inferior to superior, the aortic valve opens, pushing oxygenated blood into this aortic arch, into these main blood vessels, number one, two, and three. And if I draw and imagine this line here, number one is gonna pump blood to the right side of the body. Number two and three are gonna pump blood to the left side of the body, to the upper extremity. This one, number one going to the right side is called the brachiocephalic. Brachiocephalic artery. Now, in the word brachiocephalic, we can break that word down into two words. Brachio, which means arm, and cephalic, which means head. So this brachiocephalic on the right-hand side has to find a way of bringing blood to the right arm, the right shoulder, the right forearm, right fingers, and cephalic portion up to the neck and head. But on the left-hand side, number two, that's called the left common carotid artery, the left common carotid artery, that's number two. And number three, that's going to be called the left subclavian artery. So the left common carotid, the carotids go up the neck to the head, exterior, and brain. And the left subclavian artery is going to feed blood to the left shoulder, left arm, left forearm, left fingers. That's the arch of the aorta and the three main branches coming off of it. The brachiocephalic artery going to the right, the left common carotid artery going to the left, and the left subclavian artery. Now, anytime you hear the word common, it's safe to assume that it will divide into an internal and external something. An internal and external something. So the left common carotid will divide into a left internal carotid and a left external carotid. The external carotid stays external. The internal carotid is gonna feed the brain, okay? So keep that in mind. Anytime you hear the word common, think, okay, it's going to divide into an internal and external something for the most part. So the arch of the aorta then comes down, and we can see it here. See this arrow here at the bottom? So that's going to be the descending aorta, bringing blood to the lower half of the body. Now, the musculature in the atrium are called pectinate. And the musculature down in the ventricles are referred to as trabecula carnae. Trabecula carnae muscle. Okay, I do have a video that you can watch on my YouTube channel that does go through the blood flow again. And I want you to be able to draw that out. Okay, you need to be able to draw that out. So please take the time to do that. Okay, when we come back, we'll go through um, some other main, main blood vessels of the heart from a different perspective.